How does lecturing at the Marshall Center and talking to the participants in the seminar help what you're trying to accomplish in terms of that reset relationship with Russia and what's ongoing? Well, I think it's really important because uh, the lecture itself that I give, you know, may be important to the people who are hearing it. That is more for them to judge. For me, the more important part is the question and answer session mm -hmm. and the chance after the lecture to talk individually with some of the participants, some of the students mm -hmm. who are here. Mm -hmm. uh, because that helped me as an American diplomat, a representative of the, of the administration, understand the larger context in which we're trying to build this reset. Mm -hmm. It doesn't depend solely on the United States and Russia. It depends on our relationship with our European allies, uh, to understand how they see Russia's development in their own interests mm -hmm. and the specific concerns that they bring to the table are very important for us to understand as we try to move forward with Russia mm -hmm. in a cooperative and productive way. So that it's not simply the American concept of how to build a stronger relationship with Russia, but it's informed by some of our closest partners and frankly by people who understand what's happening in Russia mm. very, very well, in some cases intimately. Hmm. You've had the START Treaty uh, recently, uh, and then the, a couple of working groups within the DOD. What other items of progress would you note to people uh, who might say in this two years that there just hasn't been a lot of visible sort of reset going on? What, what else would you highlight in that, in that time period that's kind of come around and, and, and made things move forward? Well, the reset of the Russian-American relationship really aimed to build a more constructive and productive way of conducting our relationship, of uh, talking to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, for a lot of reasons, a sort of resort to megaphone diplomacy at some times, in which we were trading accusations, issuing press releases, and not really sitting down and talking through the issues, through the problems, with the full measure of respect for the other side's view. And I put the Russians in the same category as us. Mm -hmm. The, relation, the relationship between Russia and the United States is always a very special one because it has global implications. Mm -hmm. uh, and the degree to which that relationship had gotten uh, tense and scratchy by the time I became ambassador in 2008 was, very cons uh, was a great matter of concern to me and mm -hmm. something I wanted to work hard to try to improve. And I think uh, the first year of the reset, 2009, was a year in which we improved the tone and uh, I think uh, some of the attitude that we brought, brought to the table, we kind of restored some of the habits of cooperation and even dialogue that we lost uh, over the preceding years. 2010 was the year in which, the year just passed, was the year in which that better tonality, uh, restored habits of dialogue actually started to produce results. And the two that you mentioned, or the one that you mentioned, the START Treaty is probably the most conspicuous sure. example of that. The fact that we were able to conclude a major arms control treaty continuing the reduction of the strategic nuclear arsenals on both sides in such a relatively short period of time, mm -hmm. really less than a year, uh, given especially how much the relationship had become tense, was really quite remarkable. The fact that we were also able to bring the 123 agreement into force, the agreement that really opens the door to a much broader cooperative relationship between Russia and the United States in the area of uh, peaceful nuclear energy is also significant. Russia took a very big step in our direction in 2010 towards facilitating the transit of American troops and materiel into Afghanistan. Uh, their support for the continuance of the Manas Transit Center in Kyrgyzstan was a uh, quite a significant change from their view on that just two or three years earlier. And you're also talking about, I think, the overfly opportunities that we get for flying over the country as well? Right. Yeah. We now, through the transit agreement, uh, have been able to bring close to, I think now, 60 or 75,000 American troops mm -hmm. into Afghanistan through the Manas Transit Center in a much more cost-effective way that have saved uh, tens of millions of dollars mm -hmm. for American taxpayers. Uh, the other thing that I would point to in terms of concrete accomplishments of the reset are the American jobs that were created or protected by the investment and trade successes we had in 2010. Mm. Boeing signed a major agreement uh, in June of last year with uh, Aeroflot 
to sell 50 Boeing 737s worth about four billion dollars and we're hopeful for a second agreement this coming year at about the same amount for the sale of 767s. There were major investments by PepsiCo, by John Deere, by General Electric also in Russia that pay dividends for the American consumer and help both countries put their relationship on a much stronger commercial footing. A better commercial relationship between Russia and the United States is something of a shock absorber. Mm. It uh, helps us even out some of the political vicissitudes mm. that characterize the cyclical nature of U.S.-Russia relations over the years. If you have a strong stakeholder base in the business sector, mm. uh, it's sometimes easier to avoid uh, bad decision making at the political level, which at times has driven us into corners sure. on both sides. Sure. Germany is a partner with us here at the Marshall Center. What role do you see Germany playing in this process, and what role has it played, and how do you see Germany going forward? Well, Germany has had a very productive relationship with Russia over the past uh, five, six, seven years, even during a period when our own relationship with Russia was suffering for a lot of reasons. And I think one of the reasons that Germany has been able to do that is because the commercial basis for the relationship it has with mm. Russia is so strong. Mm. Uh, the stakeholders on both sides uh, are very uh, careful to make sure that the economic benefit that both countries derive from that uh, isn't jeopardized by the wrong kind of political decision or political atmosphere. <clears throat> I think there's something that we can uh, learn from that. Uh, obviously, there's a geographic difference. Russia's trade with uh, Germany is probably always going to be more robust than our own trade simply because of geographic mm -hmm. difference. But uh, Germany has also found a way in specific areas, telecommunications, energy, uh, to carve out a kind of special trade relationship and investment and trade successes with Russia. Mm -hmm. And I think there's another area in which we need to look uh, carefully at our own possibility for expanding in areas like energy efficiency, for example, mm -hmm or uh, space-based technologies, yeah. in which we in Russia both have uh, a certain degree of past success and past cooperation that we could build on to build something uh, of greater value really to both countries than if we pursued this separately. Mm. And then finally, how, um, in speaking to the participants today, what can they do for you? And, what, and in turn, what can they do as they go back to their countries in uh, Europe, Eurasia, and elsewhere to help this, this relationship uh, grow closer? Well, the, the help that they give to us, they gave through the questions that I got and the informal discussions I had afterwards, in which uh, they took issue with some of my uh, conceptions, some of my personal uh, maybe biases, in my experience in working with Russia, because they come at it from a different angle, and they help me see things from a slightly different perspective, which helps, I think, round out my own ability to deal effectively with uh, some of these problems. Mm -hmm. uh, what they derive, the benefit they derive from, uh, from uh, their uh, participation in the senior executive seminar, I think, is really two. First of all, it's just a tremendous networking uh, potential for them to meet uh, the rising generation in other countries who, like them, are going to be the leaders and, mm -hmm. and the decision makers in the years and uh, the decade to come. And they also hear directly from the American ambassador, from the other American, high-ranking American participants, a very clear, I hope clear, articulation of what we see our interests in a better relationship with Russia tied up in. Uh, it really isn't about building a relationship for its own sake. Mm -hmm. We have our own interests that we're trying to solve as Americans. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, the point that I tried to make today is that we see that through cooperation with Russia, we can get a lot farther in confronting those challenges and dealing with those issues mm -hmm. than if we went at it separately. And certainly, we'll have a lot more success if Russia isn't pushing against mm -hmm. us uh, or even taking a neutral stand. Uh, I think for many of them, understanding that America values the Russian relationship as central to our concept of a more peaceful, stable world, uh, I think maybe helps them understand their own concerns about how Russia is developing and maybe leave just a little more certain that America is in this for the long term and not just a short-term tactical benefit.